What's going on YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna be going over the March 2022 Bay Area real estate market update. We're gonna be going over the market statistics for Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, San Francisco County, Alameda County, and Contra Costa County. We'll be looking at single family homes as well as the condo slash townhouse market to see if real estate prices are going up or going down and if it's a good time to buy or sell. And this is your first time on the channel. Welcome, my name is Sean and I love real estate. And on this channel, I make real estate easy. So if you wanna learn more about how to build generational wealth through real estate, then consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos just like this one. And of course, if you guys enjoy this video, then please hit that like button to feed the YouTube algorithm to help this channel grow. So the first thing we're gonna look at are the statistics for Santa Clara County single family homes. And as you can see here, the market has been very, very kind to Santa Clara County. There has been a huge increase on the month of February from almost 113% to 117% for the sales to this price ratio. And the days on market have remained the same at 14 days. So again, if this is your first time here, the way we look at this is this sales to list price ratio is just a metric that says that on average, if a property is listed for a certain price, then this property will on average sell for around 117% of what you listed it for. So to make numbers easy, if you listed it for $1 million, then on average, you'll sell for 17% above that or $1.17 million. And again, this is a huge jump from just last month of January where we had 113%. So last month in February was very, 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 very hot. Market has increased the pricing significantly and the days on market remain flat. So again, what days on market signifies is how long does it take for a listing agent to put a property on the market and then for it to actually go under contract or pending? So if you put it on the market on a Wednesday, then you had a week or two weeks full of open houses and showings. And then two weeks later on that Wednesday, on average, you'll have gotten an offer accepted. Of course, this is an average. So there are some properties that go pending after one day. There are some properties that go pending after 60 days. But on average, 14 days on market is still very, very good. So the next metric we look at are the months of inventory. If you look at the data here, we can see that the months of inventory have increased slightly. So this means that there is a little bit of a slowdown in the overall market. Uh, the months of inventory signifies how long it takes to sell out all the active properties that are on the market, assuming that no new properties go on the market and you still sell at the same pace. In general, anything under three months for your months of inventory is considered a seller's market. So at 1.2 months, we're still very much in a seller's market. If we look at the number of homes for sale versus sold, we see a very interesting thing happening here. For almost all of 2021, we had more properties that were being sold than properties being put on the market. So right here, we're seeing more you know, red bar, which means that there are more properties that are active than those that were sold in February. Again, this is interesting and it may signify a slowdown in the market. Even though I know I just said in the past few slides that the market is very hot. So going forward, there might be more supply than demand. And so prices may go down. We'll have to see how everything shakes up. But again, th these are like a sign that we have more inventory and less demand overall. So prices may go down in the future. And look at that sales price over time. Again, like before, we saw that sales prices have increased pretty significantly compared to last month. So in January, we had an average sales price of $2.042 million. And in February, we now have 2.174. So this is over $100,000 of increase or over 5% increase from the last month. Don't worry about this month for now, because again, this is like the very first day of March as of this recording. So the data here is not complete. We'll look at the full month and what transpired there. So prices have increased, which is pretty good. All right, so next we'll look at data for the condo and townhouse market for Santa Clara County. So here we can see as well, the sales to list price ratio has increased, going up from 106% up to 109%. Your days out of market have gone down. So it means that properties are being picked up a lot faster than they were over previous months. Here we're only at 16 days, which is really good. All right, months of inventory here have only increased by a little bit, we're at 0 0.9 months. And your number of homes for sale versus sold, you can see that they're still more green than red, which signifies more demand than supply. So here, the market's still very healthy for the condo market. And sales price over time has increased. Again, so before in January, we're at 944,000. Here in February, we're at 1,065,000. So again, over $100,000 jump from January to February. And again, don't mind this number. We're the first day of the month. All right, so now we're looking at San Mateo County single family homes. And here too, wow, look at this jump. From under 110, to 115%. So a 5% sales to list price ratio jump. So basically I feel really bad for anyone who was bidding on houses in February. It was a kind of bloodbath situation and your days on market have decreased to 14 days. 
This is insane, right? Especially comparing to the last month, you were at 24 days, now you're down to 14 days. But the months of inventory here have increased from 1.1 months to 1.5 months. And looking at the chart here, we have the same thing that we saw in Santa Clara County. We have more properties that are active here than are being sold. So again, does this signify a slowdown in the future? Possibly. And sales price over time have surprisingly decreased on average compared to January. So we have an average sales price of 2.4 million, whereas before you had an average sales price of 2.6 million. All right, let's check out the condos and townhouses for San Mateo County. Wow, again, a huge jump from 103% to 107.5%. And your days on market have decreased from 31 days to 24 days. Your months of inventory here have remained relatively flat, and this is good, 1.3 months and 1.4 months. Looking at the chart for number of homes for sale versus sold, you can see here that it very rarely breaks through where you have more properties sold than for sale. And then, you know, personally I believe it's because the condo and townhouse market in the peninsula costs more and it's not really a good deal anymore because people can work from home, they can work remotely. So why not take that money and buy a property over in East Bay instead of having a condo in the peninsula? So that's why you have seen the slowdown ever since the pandemic had hit. And here we can see that we have a little bit more that are active compared to ones that are sold. And look at the sales price over time. This one's cool. It actually went up. So the average sales price went from, you know, almost a million dollars to 1.15 million. So $150,000 average increase. All right, next we're gonna look at San Francisco County single family homes. So here, again, we have the spike where the sales to list price ratio has increased from 118% to 122%. So on average, a property in San Francisco that's listed for a million dollars would actually sell for $1.22 million. And again, it's my personal belief that that is a strategy that you have to do in San Francisco. You know it's gonna sell for a certain number, so you just backtrack so that it becomes a 20% jump to your goal. The cool thing here is that your average days on market have actually decreased as well from 36 days down to 19 days. If we look at the months of inventory, we can see that we are still at two months. So nothing has really changed too much um, for San Francisco. And look at this chart too, you can see that you have more properties that are on the market compared to the ones that are for sale. So San Francisco got hit like the hardest out of all the Bay Area counties um, during COVID because like I said, people can move out and not have to live in the expensive markets. Sale price over time has increased you know, I just think like January was a particularly low month for these properties. So it's kind of like on track for these past few months from the fall. All right, now let's look at condos and townhouses for San Francisco County. And here we have some very interesting data. When I see data like this at 150%, something tells me that there's something wrong here. And generally we just kind of disregard this and uh, maybe there's something wrong with their system. But we can see the average days on market have decreased from 60 days to 34 days. So a bit more of a normalcy compared to where it was before. The months of inventory here are pretty atrocious for San Francisco condos. And as you can see here for the past few years, they've all been at the you know, four month range. Here in peak COVID, we're at nine months where properties were not moving. Now we're at four months. So, you know, not as good as it was last year at like two months, but we're at four months. So same here, like there's way more inventory than there's demand. People just aren't buying as many condos over in San Francisco. This hasn't changed for the past two years I've been doing this. And sales price over time, this is incredible. I don't know why this is this number, but um, your average sales price is at $2 million here. Whereas before it was at 1.3 million. So personally, I have a suspicion that maybe this data set is incomplete. The website that I'm using is pro.mlslistings.com and they usually service San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, Alameda County, Santa Cruz County. So San Francisco and Contra Costa, these counties do have data from this MLS, but again, I don't think it's a complete set, which is why you have some weird numbers like this once in a while. All right, next let's look at Alameda County. So we can see here that the average days on market have decreased and the average sales to special ratio has increased. So now we're at 119%. Again, I think there's a lot of crazy bidding going on. It's very hard to win a property over in February, especially in the Bay Area. Look at months of inventory, it's increased a little bit, so look at the number of homes for sellers that sold. And we can see that we have more properties that are on the market than are being sold. So that's why we have the slowdown in the days on market. It's actually interesting too, can you compare this number to what it was last year, right? Last year, this is March. So typically speaking, during the spring times, you're gonna have more inventory increasing just like this, but you should also have more sales just like this. And it generally doesn't slow down until August where it goes down a little bit. So let's keep going. Let's look at the sales prices over time. And we can see it's been relatively flat, but it has increased a little bit from January as well. So 1.35 million to 1.46, another $100,000 increase. 
All right, condos and townhouses for Alameda County. So this number has increased again. So 104.5% to 107. Days on market here have increased by just one day. So again, pretty similar. Months of inventory here also look flat, very close. Your number of homes for sale versus sold. This is pretty interesting. So we actually have a lot more properties that are on the market here than are being sold. And uh, townhouse market prices have remained flat from January. Okay, Contra Costa County. So let's see here, sales to this price ratio has increased a little bit, just about two and a half percent, and your days on market have decreased by two days. Your months of inventory here have increased by just a little bit from 0.7 to one month. Number of homes for sale versus sold here, we again, seeing more inventory and not as many people actually closing on these properties. So this is going up, whereas these are going down. And your sales price over time has increased from 1.1 million to 1.25 million. So it's another $150,000 increase all right, finally, let's check out the condos and townhouses in Contra Costa County. So your average sales to this price ratio has increased from 104% to 106%, and your days on market have decreased from 24 days to 15 days. Months of inventory here have also remained flat from 0.8 months to 0.8 months. And for the number of homes for sale versus sold, we see that the demand is keeping up. So we have you know, a similar ratio of homes that were sold versus the ones that are active. And looking at the sales price over time, we can see that the prices have increased from 581 up to 660. So again, another almost $100,000 increase here, but it's putting it back in line with its peaks over in October. So that concludes the monthly market update for March of 2022. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Based on looking at the spreadsheets and looking at all the data here, it seems to me that the market has picked up tremendously in February. And from my own anecdotal evidence, my dad tells me that the market was crazy. Like trying to bid on a property, you still get outbid by 30 or 40 people going to the same property. Over the past month, interest rates have increased tremendously. That usually does put a slowdown on the market. It forces prices to go down. However, in a market like the Bay Area, a lot of people do come from wealthier backgrounds. They have a lot of cash on hand. So the mortgage isn't really a factor compared to what it is in some other areas. They can put down 30, 40% down and they get a loan for the rest. Now, some things that were interesting on this chart was seeing the actives to sold ratio. It seems like there are more properties being put on the market now because sellers think it's a good time to sell, but you have less actual closed properties. All the activity, all the properties that are sold, those are properties that were under contract in January. So going into March, it's like, hmm, who knows? Is the market gonna continue to be very hyper-competitive? People are gonna continue putting offers 20% over asking. We don't know. But it's safe to say that Bay Area real estate, especially in the South Bay and East Bay right now, is very popular. If you are trying to get a property in those areas, you need to make sure you work with the right people and you need to have guidance from professionals who can actually help you navigate through these very choppy waters. So if you guys are thinking of buying or selling a house in the Bay Area, feel free to reach out to me and I'll send you a referral to an agent that I know who can help you navigate these waters through this very challenging market. And if you guys are thinking of fixing and flipping in this market, feel free to reach out to me so we can give you a loan for your project. It's definitely a very challenging time. It's very interesting. It's very hard to find good deals. But then there's also the thought in the back of our heads like, will this market tank at any point? We honestly don't know. So it's challenging to know what will happen in this market. But I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. So feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. And let me know your thoughts if the market's gonna to continue to increase, if it's gonna to continue to be super competitive, or are we gonna see a slowdown in the near future? Historically speaking, the spring months are absolutely insane in the Bay Area, and there's very little chance of competing unless you're willing to throw down some serious coin. But anyways, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, do me a huge favor and just smash like button to feed the YouTube algorithm to help grow this channel. It'll help us a lot. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you and I'll see you next time. Take care.